Hi, I'm Kip McClurg, and we are continuing our look at the book of Acts. Acts is actually part two of what start, was started by Luke in, in the book of Luke. And Luke was writing to an unknown person named Theophilus. It was an, it's an unusual name. Two Greek words put together, Theo, meaning God, in Ophilus, which means one who loves. If one is a bibliophile, uh, one loves books. And so Theophilus is one who loves God. We're not sure if that was his real name or if that was a reference to anyone who might love God. But Luke was trying to write an orderly account of the things that happened with Jesus prior to his death and then what happened with the church after his death. And so last uh, episode, uh, we discovered that the uh, disciples had been sent uh, to a place called the Upper Room, where they were gathered, it said, in one accord, 120 of them together, waiting on the Holy Spirit. Waiting is not an easy, easy thing to do, and particularly in one room. Now, I am coming to you from a specific room at Vestavia Methodist Church, and it's one that not many people see, but uh, it was... Uh, when uh, Bishop Morgan was pastor here, he used it as a private study, and it's the last room that you can get to in the prayer chapel. So it's one of the highest rooms that we have. Uh, we all call it the upper room, and we use it, as you can see, to, to store candles and candelabras and baskets and everything that we would use in worship. Uh, but we refer to it as the upper room, and that's where the disciples were as they were waiting. They were there in that one place, now, we are not all in one place. We are all scattered a lot of different places right now, but in, in another sense, we are all in one place. We're in a place that we've not been before, and we're in a place, hopefully, where we're praying and where we're preparing and we're, we're waiting, and uh, we are trying to learn something as we sort of sit and see what's going to happen in the world and what God might be up to. There's an old saying that says that, God works in mysterious ways. And so what I would propose to us uh, today is uh, to be thinking of the question, what is it that God might be doing that is completely new? Acts chapter 2 is a chapter in the story of the church, probably one of the most important uh, stories of the church. It's when the church really began. God was doing something new before the Spirit had been sent to individuals for individual tasks, but suddenly the Holy Spirit comes, and everyone in that upper room, all 120, were filled with the Holy Spirit, and it said that they went out into the streets and they began to speak with, with, with languages that they didn't even know. They didn't know what was going on. They couldn't understand it, but it was obvious that God was doing something completely new. God, uh, in Acts, was... was allowing individuals to have the capacity to be changed by God, to truly be transformed by God, and the Holy Spirit enabled that. As we've been at home sort of waiting around and uh, trying to keep occupied, I, I've been asking myself, what is it that God is doing that is new in our lives? And it, perhaps it's a question that you could be asking uh, in your life. For our family, our oldest child is uh, 22, and has been a part of a career and has left home, uh, but came back home because of the quarantining to be with us. And our other son who was in college came home and our youngest son, who uh, is about a nine, year, nine years younger than his oldest brother, are all in the same house together. One of the challenges when you have that broad of an age range is that kids don't always get along and they have different interests. And suddenly, as th these days have happened, we've discovered that our, our sons all have very common interests. We're all learning to play ping pong. They're playing video games together and having fun and laughing. And, and suddenly it's something new. And I realize that this for us has been a, a beautiful thing. And in spite of all the other things and the tragic things that are going on in the world, I can see that, that God has done something new for us, something new for my children that I, I value deeply. Uh, I don't know what God might be doing in your life that is new, but uh, I would encourage you to, to look around. We uh, all have been probably reflecting on our, what our lives have been like. We have had lives with lots of opportunities, and maybe those were good opportunities and activities, but maybe we've learned that there's a limit to those, and maybe there can be too many. 
sometimes in moments like this, we realize God is doing something new, and we realize that, yeah, career was good, but, but you know, there are things in life that are more important than my career. Another question I would encourage us to be asking is, what coincidences do you see that God might be, that really might be God working in the background? I quit believing in coincidences. I, I believe that God is somehow at work amongst them. And that day, it happened to be that there were people from all over the world there to celebrate um, a feast. And when they went out and spoke all these different languages, those people heard the good news. And then they went to places, they went to uh, their home countries, and they, uh, they then started churches and started spreading the good news of Christ. Was it coincidence that it happened that so many people were in Jerusalem for that feast? I don't like to think so. A lot of coincidence I've noticed have been happening for our church. We had been initiating the use of shared document software uh, for the last six months, and suddenly when COVID hit, uh, we were able to expand that and, and be able to communicate well and, and to be creative together, even though we weren't in the same building. Uh, we, had, we had purchased our live stream equipment and begun filming, and we had hired staff to help us with video editing, and suddenly th that process uh, became the highlight of what we're doing in, in, uh, in these days. Our Sunday schools and small groups, we've been uh, planning and, and looking at, at uh, strategies for how to give them strength, and, and suddenly we are having lots of ex good experiences with small groups with people who are not even in the same room. And so our lives um, uh, at the church have been expanded by the coincidences that God has been doing, and I'm excited to see what that might bring. I would encourage you in your life, what are the coincidences that may be aligning, that may be God at work instead? And what is it that's new that God might be working in your life for the coming months and coming years of your life? Thanks very much.